Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the founder of GOP is for me, Mr. Duke Machado. That was incredible. I certainly don't feel like I deserve that. And I want to tell you thank you for giving me the opportunity to come and visit with you today. And uh, what, what I used to do was chase my career, basically. I gave all my time towards the car business, and I didn't do anything politically. Uh, prior to Obama's election, I was inactive. Um, but when he was elected, I stood up on that, that night from my sofa and just couldn't believe what had just happened. How could this happen? And I started blaming other people, started blaming the party, started blaming the, the, the national level, and you know, uh, maybe we didn't have a candidate that was strong enough, and looking for all these reasons. But the truth was, is that I, I, couldn't, answer to, I couldn't answer to myself that I had done anything to help. And from that moment, I vowed to get involved somehow and to do something. And that's how I launched into activism. When I, when I learned about um, the Hispanic trends, because I wasn't even focused on that, uh, there, when I learned that by 2020, Hispanic population in Texas will be the majority, it kind of blew my mind. I was like, okay, so that's 10 million more Hispanics that are going to be here in the next eight years. And they're all going to grow in this area from Dallas to San Antonio to Houston, this triangle. Um, and then I started looking at the local trends, and the local trends are that 28% of Hispanics drop out of high school. They don't graduate. 51% um, uh, of, of Hispanic males don't graduate. So where do these kids end up? They end up walking our streets with their pants sagging, looking for whatever, you know, you, you see them all over town, and, and they're on the path, ultimately, they're going to find a career that may not be legal, and, uh, and they're going to be in our neighborhoods, possibly getting involved with gangs that are creeping up from Mexico, and before long, it's out of control, we look around, and what happened? So, I feel that the Republican Party has uh, not been very proactive when it comes to our messaging, our positioning, and development of solutions on how we're going to involve this huge uh, it's the demographic that's, that's, that's coming. Um, we have to have a real dialogue and we have to be willing to call things as they are and say what, what reality is. And, um, you know, some of the biggest issues that we face right now are, are immigration and border security issues. We have lots of law enforcement um, candidates in here, and, and I'm going to tell you that this issue of immigration um, and border security, uh, the lack of response, the lack of, uh, of a program that we have as a party to get behind and push, uh, because we don't get into it, uh, we, don't, we don't solve any problems, it keeps coming. We're worried about catching people around Navarro County selling small amounts of drugs when tons are crossing the border. Um, the, the party, for some reason, is afraid to get involved in this dialogue because they think they're going to alienate Hispanics. Uh, we don't want, you know, they might, they might, if you go to their website, um, or their Hispanic outreach website, they don't even mention anything about immigration or border security. It's, it's kind of wild. It's, it's like they want to act like it's not there or this isn't an issue that we need to deal with. But it's been swept under the rug for so long, now we have nightmare situations. How does it affect us locally? Look at your schools. Look at the budgets in the schools and how much of that budget is going towards uh, programs that, that, um, that go towards supporting people. Many of them are illegal immigrants, some of them are, have uh, legal children and, 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 have, and they have illegal status. Um, we have, the, this has been presidential debate material that, that uh, we're not discussing locally. And when it, when it comes down to how do we make a difference, there's only one way we can connect, and it's by uh, making contact with uh, parents and their children. What we've learned is that when you start to talk about 
uh, advancing someone's kids, that opens the door. It allows us to have a dialogue. And, and when we're concerned and when they see that the party's concerned about advancing uh, the community and, and being real about it, not just talking about it during election season, um, they're going to build trust. And once you build trust, then we can ask for the vote and keep the vote and then and keep, uh, keep this growing demographic trending towards our way versus the other way. And let me tell you what the Democrats are doing. Democrats across Texas, the, the state party, launched a program called the PROMESA Project. And uh, they had 11 paid staff people on, on 11 different college campuses where they're recruiting people to make a promise to be the representative of the Democrat Party in their home. So it's like getting the young people to do their work for them. And that's, you know, it's, you think that may not be a bad idea, at least they're penetrating the homes and getting the messaging out. But why would you go to the kids and, and skip the parents? And that's where I see the Republican Party being able to um, to impact and, and we have to do this we have to make a difference locally before anyone believes that we care about anything and that's our problem we have a perception problem 30 years of democrat control of all these neighborhoods have convinced them that we're the bad guys they think we're all rich white and you know against Hispanics but that's not true I want to talk about briefly and then I'm going to wrap up and we'll get to you guys. We have a choice as to what kind of future we have here in the state of Texas. If we decide to get involved and engage and be proactive and help our, our young people graduate, get into some sort of a tech school, get a job that they can support themselves and then contribute back to society. That's the cycle that we have to get people on because right now they're just dropping off and they're going into no man's land. And, and that has to change if we expect anything else to change. Our website is gopisforme.com. You can go to that site. You can read different uh, articles and, and issues that we uh, discuss. Um, you can share your comments and thoughts on, on solutions or ideas that you have. It's an open dialogue, and that's what we've been missing for so long. <clears throat> we developed an education initiative called Stepping Stones, and it is, a, it is an education initiative. It's what we use as a tool to get into homes in the local community. This club here has a template for that, but we need people to work it. We have to have a group of people making calls, willing to go into Hispanic neighborhoods, black neighborhoods, it doesn't matter what. I mean, we focus on the Hispanic trends, but what we do really affects, it, it crosses all, all, all boundaries. But this local group needs your help and support. And they need, they need to build this, and you need them to build this, because if we do this the right way, and we have like-minded people, it doesn't matter what race you are. And we have to get our values across, Glory, <laughs> don't worry. Uh, we have to get our, our values across, and uh, we need to start now. So um, change our perception. Don't make assumptions. Don't assume that people are, are Hispanics or liberals just because we're traditionally voting for Democrats. Uh, many times, the connection just hasn't been made. And I will end with, we can't expect Hispanics to vote for you if they don't trust you. So we have to build that trust and start doing things that matter. I thank you for your time.